It is pretty much a well-known fact that people want games and gaming to be taken seriously. Long gone are the days when it was just an Italian man jumping and stomping over stuff. Gradually, developers and consumers wanted the medium to get some serious respect from the general public, aka elderly people from traditional media and their disappointed parents. Hence, we started to get more highbrow and profound sort of games. Yes, there were your usual, just for entertainment sort of titles, but gaming was becoming more than something just for kids or younger audience. Dealing with subject matters and topical topics that can be considered quite heavy and touchy to some individuals, which has got its fair share of unwarranted and unnecessary backlash by those same elderly people and, of course, the parents. And somewhere along the way, games started to become more like movies in certain sectors or took major inspiration from them. Their intention wasn't faulty, their execution was. Which is why we are provided with impractical and irritating features like film grain, which has plagued the horror genre, and motion blur, a nauseating and nonsensical detail that hardly anyone uses. But those are only the minor quirks, as you can just turn them off and be done with it. Had to say this before someone points it out in the comment section like a dumbass. The major one is cutscenes, and as I said earlier, it's not all of them. The problem comes with the cinematic type. We get cinematic trailers for games rather than their gameplay, because who wants to see their actual gameplay anyway? All those cinematic teasers and sequences just kills titles for me. They don't even try to utilize the uniqueness of this format. The interactive aspect of it is what gives games its artistic value. Without that, the whole appeal of it fades away. They have no intention of taking notes from them, just purely wanting to emulate those mediums. A futile attempt at replicating an element which will always feel lackluster in comparison. Well, without further ado, Let's begin with the first issue that cutscene in games suffer from. The placement. No matter if something has great value or not, if it isn't properly introduced, it is bound to be ineffective. And in this case, it is painful to go through. That being the most recommended and listed in every goddamn article and video about co-op games that is out there. Monster Hunter World. One of those games whose DLCs are priced the same as the base game, even though they have lesser content to offer. You know, just a great sign for a company that you can blindly trust. After months and months of me and my friend hyping the purchase of this game, we finally got it in a sale, being all giggly and excited about finally playing this apparent best co-op game. Which it wasn't, as we couldn't play together right from the get-go having to complete some sort of tutorial before unlocking that. And this is where the down spiral of multiple issues began. For like the first 30 minutes or so, you're stuck in this cutscene with brain melting dialogue and acting about characters who I don't know or care a great deal about to what they have to say. I just wanted to play a game with my friend and kill some massive and magnificent monsters. But no, the developers had other plans to prioritize than letting the player actually play the game. As after those unskippable cutscenes, you're subjected to even more cutscenes and tutorial missions which go on for a long time. Making the first hour of this game basically go from point A to B and talk with this NPC. Which just made me refund the game before we hit the 2 hour mark. Clocking at like 100 minutes which mainly consisted of us doing mental gymnastics on how to actually play alongside in those dreadful and tiring missions. I have heard numerous times that it is a game that takes time to get into the actual good stuff, which is an excuse for it having bad structure. And it can go a long way with some minor tuning up. But no, more overbloated DLCs it is. Let's move on to the other issue before I pop a nerve from this rage boner of mine towards that game, as I could have easily featured Monster Hunter World in this section of the video, as it suffers from that issue too, that being the unskippable nature of those scenes. 
Yes, I can understand that the developers put their heart and soul in them with countless hours of work and want the player to witness it. But they too have to understand that you can't force a story onto a player. It is just a bad decision from their part and isn't going to do justice to whatever story or gameplay that is to follow. There are numerous games that can be featured in here, but Senmu 3 takes the crown for me. Another title with dull vocal performance that you can't escape from. Aside from all the previous pitfalls that I mentioned, which can be applied in here too, as again, I didn't need half an hour worth of monologue in the beginning of the game. To me, they're just pixels in front of my screen who are stringing up words about stuff that I'm not interested in. The job of the developers is to make me care about them. I want to experience the gameplay it has to offer and along the way develop a bond with the character. If it isn't done competently or is just forced onto me, then it is bound to get ignored. But that's exactly what Senmu 3 is in the starting point. Which is the same because after you power through it, the game's environment is somewhat interesting. But knowing that I wouldn't be able to skip the cutscenes, I was hesitant to continue. If I wanted to watch people talk for narrative's sake, I would prefer a movie or a show, as they have a stronghold in those sectors and will always be substantially better than whatever games have to offer. Cutscenes have to be more engaging, interactive wise to immerse the player to keep them interested. No point in witnessing your character in a scene from different perspectives and angles. And this leads to my final point for this video, which isn't an issue I had or have with a particular title, but the whole cutscene scene in gaming. The methodical and uninspired ones which is rampant in so many games, but goes unnoticed or hardly gets any criticism for featuring formulaic set of segments that are mundane and monotonous to spectate. Blair Witch has one of the most typical campy horror-like introduction, which can be found in almost every horror movie of such nature, as the format was just copied and pasted without much thought being poured into it. Tomb Raider is basically the embodiment of all those action adventure titles from the bygone era featuring a protagonist who is protected by plot armor. Only difference being, it is replaced by a very athletic woman. Games like Metro and A Plague Tale do boast a fascinating setting and captivating atmosphere, but ill from the issues mentioned above. Their scenic sequences doesn't have any sort of imaginative ideas in them. These are nothing but more hindrances stalling you from actually playing the game, which are either good or decent at best, but the scent of annoyance that was left with you makes it a bore fest. Such an irksome aspect to abuse to extend their title's runtime, which is what they mainly focus on to make their games look cool rather than actually focusing on the gameplay or the overall structure of it. And I'm not even taking all those dreadful dialogue options and writing that some games in those scenes have into consideration, which doesn't even offer a branching choice to the player. But it's time to conclude all of this, and rather than ending on a cynical and negative point, let me shine a light onto some titles who managed to make those scenes more creative and enjoyable to eyewitness. A co-op game which is actually good at being what it is branded as is Divinity Original Sin 2, which doesn't bombard the player with cutscenes that can't be skipped or is placed right in the beginning, and can be the perfect example of how you make the player care about the character they are controlling easing them into this mythical and lower fairly universe with vibrant habitants, and trusting them with endless freedom which feels more open-ended and exciting to play even with turn-based combat than a title which is bound to attract more eyes towards its direction. If I recall correctly, this game has, at best, like a dozen of cutscenes consisting of some beautifully hand-painted set of scenes which are quite absorbing to observe 
and rarely are there segments where each and every character are locked into a conversation, allowing others to explore while one is expanding the overarching plot of this wonderful game. Titles such as Little Nightmares, Rain World and Inside cunningly utilize their perspective to establish a scene without taking away the control from the player, giving those games a more immersive feel. Whereas classics and remakes like Doom and Black Mesa have a tendency to do the same all while being in their respected first person point of view. Something that the developers emphasized a lot in the latter example. Exemplary game series like Half-Life and Left 4 Dead always allows the player to roam around while the NPCs converse with other AI members or the player, never taking away the action from the person controlling the character. Just like Divinity 2, Darkwood and Darkest Dungeon take an artistic route with their cutscenes, another direction that can be taken while brainstorming about how to execute those parts of a game. Although I prefer video games that aren't littered with locking cutscenes and will continue to favor them, I admire titles who ingeniously implement those sections in a game. Nonetheless, my casual at heart gaming mentality will always see this digital media as a leisurely activity and this chase for cinematic and realistic cutscenes to make their games look cool and be taken seriously will bewilder me for eternity.